Hey everybody, thanks for watching again. We're going to do the Orange Atomic Bird from Angry Bird Space. And first start with a circle that's just very slightly pear-shaped, almost unnoticeable. A little flatter on the bottom and narrower at the top, something like that. And we're going to do two eyeballs almost at the top of the head, just down a little bit. So I'm going to draw one, and this time he's looking off to the side, so the back eyeballs overlapped quite a bit. Then you're going to draw the big banana beak. And draw a little pupils in here just for fun right now. There we go. They're going to be more oval shaped because he's looking off to the side again. And once you've done that, we're going to do the lower beak, and it's the same as the top beak, just a banana shape. There's the other side of the mouth, here we go. See that? Same shape as the top, and that little part will show the inside of the mouth, just a little bit, a little bit of a tongue. Now his eyelids are just big and black. So draw another curve that meets around the eye on both eyes. There we go. Looking pretty good so far. Now his antenna, which gets very skinny where it attaches to his head, and it gets a little bit bigger towards the top. And it's not an oval or a circle on top, it's an egg shape. And his tail, some sharp angles on top, but then a curve on the bottom. And the bottom tail feather, it's just a little curved, smaller than the top one. Now we'll put on his armaments, or whatever this is, his strap. And this top one's pretty big. It's going to wrap all the way around him. And meet right here where he's got this uh, egg crest in the shape of Saturn. There we go. And another band, there's the bottom strap. There we go. You don't want these to be straight because that would mean his body's flat. So give him some curve, especially when it gets towards the edge. This one's a little trickier because it's mostly hidden, but we'll do a little strap on this side. And the fourth strap is basically hidden. So you don't need to worry about that one. All right, there you go. That's basically it, sketched in the rough. Now I'm going to go anchor in all these lines before I ink it in, make them a little more solid and defined. We're going to do that on high speed. Now with this, we're going to do something that I have not done in years, and that's make it an animation cell. And cartoons now are all done on computers. They, I'd be just shocked if anybody's still painting animation cells anymore. Because um, it's just not cost effective. It's just way too expensive to animate that way. But it's really fun to do. So once you're done drawing your picture and filling it in with pen, take a photo of it, you can use an iPhone or anything really, and try to make it well lit and clean. Go somewhere bright so you don't get a lot of gray where the paper is. It's just, you know, basically a nice sharp white and black photo, not a gray and black photo. 
You just want to see your solid black lines and then white paper. That's it. Then what you need to do is print it out. Now I'm printing on a transparency. You can get these from Office Max, Office Depot, any paper supply place. And they are sold in, you know, pack. I can't remember how many you get, maybe a hundred. And it's just the same exact size as a sheet of paper, but you can print on it with a laser printer. Now I made a mistake. I made a few mistakes actually, because I'm looking at it and where are his eyebrows? They are not here. So I'll have to fix that. So I'm going to draw in the eyebrows that I botched up on. Okay, sometimes you don't notice details like this until it's too late. It's not too late though, I'll just go over it. And I should have drawn the first bird bigger because then I could have shrunk it down on the computer and printed it out smaller. And that would have made my lines really nice and clean. Versus what I did was the opposite. I drew it small and printed it big, which still worked, but it always looks better if, if you're going to do this. Draw big and then print it small, and you'll it's nice. You get a lot more crisper, cleaner detail, and your black lines will be darker and blacker. It works really good. So here's what we're going to do. We're just using regular acrylic uh, paint. Now, it seems like the glossier the paint is and the higher quality, the more flexible it'll be and you don't really want paint that's going to crack on you. After a while, cheap paints dry out quickly and it can crack off the page. So, I mean, I'm using cheap paints here. As long as you don't flex it, the page too much once you're done and keep it generally flat, it should stay. You want to make sure you're painting on the side with the toner. And what I'm painting first is the highlights and the shadows. So this is kind of a muddy brown orange here. And that's just a bit of a shadow. And you want it thick. You don't want thin watery paint, you want it thick. If you can't get it thick, then you just have to go over and over it until it builds up and is thick. Now if you make a mistake and like I just did and you need to wipe it off, this is really easy to do. As long as it's not dry, you can just use your finger and smear it off. You can't do that with paper, canvas, anything. But with this, if you get a little blob of ink, just take your finger and wipe it off. Now I have not done an animation cell in a long time, so I made another mistake that I forgot. You need to flip the image when you print it. So I'm applying paint on the back side of this image. When we're all done, we're going to flip it over and it's going to look really good. So I should have printed it a mirror image, but whatever, he's just going to face the other way now. I don't really care. So again, highlights and shadows first. I'm going to do a little bit of a shine here on the egg in pure white. And then I'm going to fill in his eyes. Now it's okay to paint all over the black because remember we're painting on the back. This paint I'm putting on is a little bit runny, and runny means you're going to see light through it. You don't want a thin coat of paint, so I'm going to glob it up, make it nice and thick. If you don't know, transparencies are pretty cheap, and they're a lot of fun to do. 
and acrylic paint's really not that expensive either. If you have the money, you can buy lots of colors and you don't need to mix them. Especially if you're not very good at mixing. Now for the mistaken eyebrows. Another mistake I made. It's okay, we'll just put them in now. There we go. And check this secret out. See, I need an eyebrow to go through his antenna. If you take something sharp, it could be a kitchen knife, whatever, I'm using a razor blade, you can scratch off your toner. So that's a really helpful trick. And there we go, he's all painted up and I need to let this dry before I mess around with it. So now let's work on a background. I'm gonna do a real fast, cheap and easy blue background. And then for fun, I'll do a painted space background. Since it's Angry Birds space, I'm just painting a little piece of cardboard here. Let's get a few shades of blue. And let's make use of that star splatter trick that we did on Job of the Hut, Angry Bird. Just flick your brush. There we go, and billions of stars are created in an instant. And a few blue stars. There we go, and as you can see, some of the stars don't look so hot. They're uh, kind of long splatter marks. But what you do is you can change those magically into planets. Shh, don't tell. So any little mistakes you make, which aren't really mistakes, just change them into a planet, which makes it look more interesting anyway. So light blue, I have cherry planets. Do some yellow lemon planets. All right, so here's the transparency. It's all dry and flip it over. There you go. Nice and crisp and clean, flies around. So what we'll do is take a background and you can do any kind of background you want. Pop it on. And you can put these in a frame, they look really cool. Because it's all about looking really cool. And if you put something in between, see I, if I lift it up a bit, it has its own drop shadow. Makes it pop out, look a little more 3D. You can actually get frames that are just two pieces of glass with no background, and those look really neat too. Oh, here he is floating through space. Oh no, the Angry Birds, the orange atomic bird, it's gonna blow us all up. Anyway, I hope you try this one. Remember, transparencies are not that expensive. You can get them anywhere. You can have a lot of fun. You can change the background. You could even do your own animations if you've got all the time in the world. Yeah. But this is how they do it. And uh, I hope you had a lot of fun and Again, I'm going to do another one tomorrow, so go ahead and subscribe, and we'll have some more fun. Thanks for watching. Bye.